For several years, fertility doctors have been studying a hormone produced in the ovaries called anti-mullerian hormone, or AMH. AMH is a really useful hormone to measure in women who are trying to become pregnant or are having difficulty becoming pregnant. Where does AMH come from? Most AMH is produced in the ovaries. We know that each egg in the ovaries is surrounded by a group of cells that make up a tiny cyst called a follicle. AMH is produced in the cells of these follicles. You can do a blood test to measure your AMH levels, and this number tells us about the number of eggs in the ovaries at that moment. We know that women with low AMH levels have less eggs remaining in their ovaries. Women with low levels do not respond well to fertility medication and have lower success rates with fertility treatments like IVF. What about women with high AMH levels? We are starting to learn more about this group as well. How do you know if your AMH levels are high? To determine this, the first thing you must understand is that AMH levels decrease with age. So a high AMH level for a 40-year-old woman may be average or even low for a younger woman. In order to determine if your AMH levels are high or low, you must know the range for for your age group. Here's the breakdown from tens of thousands of my patients at my practice, IVF1. The blue line is the average AMH for a given age. For example, the average AMH for a 29-year-old is about four. The average for a 40-year-old is between 1.5 and two. Of course, not everybody is going to be average. Some women may have higher than average and some women may be lower. These teal colored bars show me the AMH range for 80% of my my patients. So for example, for 29 year olds, 80% of the time their AMH level will be between 1 and 9. 10% of the time their AMH level will be less than 1 and 10% of the time it will be higher than 9. We find that these are useful ways to categorize patients. Average, above average, below average, or really high or really low. Okay, so now that you know how to determine if your AMH level is high, what do we know about women with high AMH levels? Well, they tend to be the opposite of women with low AMH levels in many ways. For example, whereas women with low AMH levels do not respond well to fertility medications, women with high AMH levels tend to respond very vigorously to fertility medications. Most fertility doctors will look at these levels to try to predict how someone will respond and then make adjustments to the dose of medication they prescribe. It has been known for some time that women with a problem called polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS, tend to have higher AMH levels. Can you use AMH levels to make a diagnosis of PCOS? Maybe. I should mention that at the time I made this video in 2025, there are no scientific organizations which include AMH in their guidelines for diagnosing PCOS. However, a recent analysis of over 200 studies found that women with PCOS very often have high AMH levels. In fact, using a single cutoff of 5.4 at any age would identify nearly 90% of women who had PCOS by more traditional criteria. In my data, if you are in the top 10% of AMH at any age, it is very likely that you would meet the criteria to be called PCOS. Infertility TV is your most trusted source for accurate information on infertility and miscarriage. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button right now. A new episode is released every week. Don't miss any episodes. You can also check us out on our website, ivf1.com, where you can become a patient.